the rust we're going to be working on. We're going to have to take off this little trim piece held on by a few panel fasteners. Just a little tip on getting these out easier. Heat them up. Including from the back. Then just get a little pry tool underneath there. There's an adhesive on here, so again... During this video, I'm going to periodically speed this up. This trim piece kind of molds around there, so I'm just going to tuck it out of the way. Okay, it's been rusting underneath that piece of trim, as you can see, for a while. And we're going to make great efforts here in this video to take off every little bit of rust that we possibly can, cutting it away with the uh, with with grinder and until we have some clean metal. I'm going to inspect for rust and make sure there isn't any more concealed underneath this paint. At the same time, I'm feather edging um, where the metal on the paint meet. Make sure you get all the rust because otherwise it won't last as long as it otherwise would. And I've identified some more here that kind of showed up, so I'm going to take off. More, more material here, kind of all the way around, another half inch or so. Okay, I cut this piece off. I'm using a piece of poster board as a template. So I'm going to make a fashion a piece of metal that will be able to fit into this spot here. I transferred the template onto this piece of sheet metal and I'm just using tinged snips. So what we've done now with this piece of sheet metal is manipulated by hand. Until it fits the contour here. Okay, now here's the view from the back side. Like I said, we formed this and we're going to slide it into place. We have this braced up here now and we're going to uh, put some JB Weld on the inside. Before you do it, we'll, we'll clean it with lacquer thinner, scratch it up with some sandpaper. A little lacquer thinner on here. And underneath here on the contact surface as well. So we're going to have equal amounts of this in equal measure, and we'll mix it with a stick and apply it with a spatula. I'm using these two tubes up. mix it till it's nice and uniform and just lay it down a thin layer and this has a fairly long working time so we don't have to be frantic about it okay so we'll slip this in place And I've got a little clamp here. Okay, the clamp's in place. I'm moving around to the other side. Now on the other side, on the inside, I, I have a piece of scrap wood I braced in there to hold it in place as it sets. Okay, so we're going to put a piece of fiberglass in here, kind of cut this roughly, and we'll attach it with the, uh, with the same material of filler. Okay, what I've done is tuck the fiberglass underneath there now. And I'm continuing to fill in the rest of this, so then when we put this on, it's going to uh, adhere the fiberglass to the inside of this metal replacement piece. Here's the inside view with the fiberglass. Okay, we're going to mix uh, one ounce of the resin 
14 drops of hardener, weigh it out, mix it up in here, and apply it with this brush. There's what one ounce looks like. And now we'll just put in 14 drops. Okay, there is some working time with this. You don't have to get all frantic with it. And just do it on both sides like that, saturate it. Okay, here it is all hardened up on the front and on the back. Okay, we're going to use this fiberglass reinforced filler along with hardener. And these are used in proportional amounts. They recommend one quarter tube to one quarter can. We're going to do that with a bit more precision. This is 1.18 kilograms or 1180 grams. And this tube is 28 grams, it's one ounce. So what we're getting is a ratio here, dividing 28 into 1180 of 42 to 1. So we have 42 grams of this to one gram of this. You can also put out any amount you want, say the filler first of, the, of this first, and then just divide by 42 and measure out and weigh out that amount of this hardener. Okay, there's our batch, 42 to 1 filler to hardener and we're just going to really rather quickly mix this together and apply it to the front and the back. Going over the fiberglass then we'll sand this down below the surface and finish it off with uh, some non-fiber filled uh, filler. Okay, the working time of this, uh, this hardener filler, body filler, is only a few minutes, so you have to work fairly quickly. I'm also not showing it, but I'm doing this on the, putting this up on the back of the repair, the inside of this uh, repair work too, to make it stronger. Okay, for our final coat on here, we're going to put in this lightweight filler without any um, fiberglass in it. Okay, we've got it mixed up. This non-reinforced filler is used primarily uh, not for strength but for um, fineness of the finish as a prep surface for, um, for the primer and paint. I'm using this sanding block with 100 grit sandpaper. Putting down more layers as needed. And in between layering, clean it off with some lacquer thinner on a cloth. Okay, this part of the process is just a matter of going over it and over it and over it, adding more filler as needed to get the surface just as smooth and as flat as you possibly can. Okay, the final ingredient here is some spot putty, which gives us an even finer finish, filling small cracks and holes. Give it the feel test to see if it's ready for primer and paint. Okay, now we're moving into primer and paint. And just a word about that. I can do an adequate job at best. Um, if you want this job done really, really well, have a pro do it. They have the materials. They have the equipment. 
to do a good job of painting, which is very, very challenging to do really, really well. So bear that in mind. And don't forget the clear coat. Not really an option. You're not going to get the shine or protection you need without it. And now we're going to put some molding tape on there. And we'll leave this stone right where the other, the original was. Get to there. I'm not going to put them in quite all the way just yet. I want a little flexibility left there. Another advantage of using a blow dryer to uh, remove these panel fasteners is that you can reuse them. Okay, now we're pressing it down. We took the tape off, pressing the double stick tape back on. Okay, I'm happy with this. I mean, the paint was a pretty good match for a rattle cam, and uh, that particular part right there by the bumper was challenging. Thanks for watching. I encourage you to subscribe if you find this material helpful. And I'll also post up some materials that are related to this that you might find useful.